uh, at 3 o'clock on Tuesday, this Tuesday, we'll be closing on this property right here. Amen. <laughs> Y'all take five seconds and give God another round of applause. A few weeks ago, I started with some funny Christmas quotes, and then last Sunday, God said, you can't be funny, you need to be serious, and he had me come up here, I had to rip my notes apart and start a whole different sermon and so forth. So anyway, this week, I've come back with some funny Christmas quotes. So Nick, go ahead and hit the first one right here. We've got, here comes Amazon, here comes Amazon, route down my driveway. Right? This year I have decided to buy my kids batteries for Christmas with a note saying toys not included. <laughs> and this last one I love. Politicians ruled that they cannot have a nativity scene in Washington, D.C. This isn't for any religious reasons. It is because they can't find three wise men. <laughs> Amen. All right, we're going to go straight to the Word. There's enough kidding around. We've had too much fun already. I'm going to get serious now. So we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 9. I'm going to read verses 6 through 7. A lot of y'all may have this memorized. Somebody say amen when you get there. I'm, I'm hearing mummerings. I didn't really hear an amen. We got any amens? Anybody there? Amen. amen. Thank you. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I praise you every Sunday. Me and my brother Bo were talking about that this morning. A big problem with church today is that they celebrate this day as the Almighty of Sundays. Or they look at Easter that way. God, we look at every Sunday that way. I, I, I claim that. I stand firm in that. But God, I do praise you for sending your son down here. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, because of that, we're able to live a freedom that we would not have had without. I want to thank you for giving your son the courage to do that. As he stood there and people mocked him, and as they nailed him to the cross, he still just loved people. He even said, God, I don't know what they do. Father, they don't know what they do. God, again, thank you for that grace and that mercy and that courage of your son. I pray over all of our families from not just this congregation, but throughout our community and throughout our online presence. God, I just pray for the families that they have a peaceful and loving Christmas season. Help us to love. Mm. In this moment, God, I ask you to anoint me from the top of my head and to the bottom of my feet. I ask that you take all selfishness, pride, anger, any fear. God, you cast it to the sea. I ask that you replace that with nothing but you. Your love, your peace, your joy, God, your happiness. I claim that over this message today, God. I ask that you get me out of the way and you take over. I claim all this in your name. Help us to love, help us to laugh, help us to forgive. Amen. All right. So today, all over the world, people celebrate Christmas, right? everywhere but they are they really celebrating the reason for the season we all say that we have families that celebrate christmas but don't go to church we have schools that take christmas break and can't wait to do it but they won't allow people to pray in their four walls we have abortion clinics that close on christmas but on the 26th They'll take a sweet, innocent, unborn child's life. But they want that Christmas break. They want that day off. We have politicians that want to that wanna honor Christmas holiday so they can go home for a couple weeks, but they don't want to honor Christ in the way that they vote. 
You know, I look at politicians, and I saw the other day they were singing a song, and one of the words, and everybody knows it was, good, or excuse me, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. I think these politicians need to listen to what they're saying. Please understand, not all of them, forgive me, not all of them, but there are some that need to listen to that. Most of the world keeps a calendar that is based on the time of our Savior of Jesus Christ. But they don't want to celebrate Christmas. I want to, I want to elaborate on that. You know, everybody's heard B.C., you know, before Christ. And then A.D. Anybody in here know what A.D. means? Thank you very much. It's not after death. Listen, if it's after death, there'd be a 33 and a half year space there that never happened, right? Okay, so let's get that right. But that Latin word a lot of y'all probably know what it means, but it is the year of our Lord. We've got people all over the world that keep a calendar with B.C. and A.D., but they don't want to celebrate what's truly the part of Christmas. We have a lot of non-Christians celebrating Christmas for the wrong reasons. But truth be told, we have a lot of Christians that do not give Christ enough credit for the holiday as well. That brings me to today's message. Keep Christ in Christmas. I want you to imagine a birthday party. I, I want you to imagine your birthday party, okay? I've got 40 coming up before too much longer, so that's what I'm going to imagine and then try to forget it as quick as possible. But I want you to imagine a big party, your, your wife, your family, they're putting it all together. You walk in, and I mean, it's got everything. It's got your favorite foods. It's got your favorite drinks. It's got the kind of music that you like. All of your friends are there, all of them. You're ready to enjoy yourself, and not one person acknowledges you, not one. That's what's happening in a lot of homes around the world. They want to celebrate a birthday party, but they don't want to invite whose birthday it actually is. That's a problem in our homes. We have got to get Christ back into Christmas in our homes. And let me tell you something, not just at Christmas either. It needs to be in our homes at all times, right? But we've got to understand what this season is all about. Today I want to discuss some of the story of Jesus' birth and also who missed Christ on the very first Christmas. I want to go to Matthew chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse 18. I'm going to read through 21. Somebody amen when they get there. This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was pregnant, or excuse me, was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. Okay, first of all, I want to stop right there. I want you to think about something. <laughs> You're engaged to, as a man, right? I, I got to look at this in a man's perspective, right? Okay, because I'm a man. So, so like, you, you're engaged to this beautiful young bride, and she comes to you and she says, I'm pregnant. And you're like, hit the door. But then she tells you, but it's the Holy Spirit. And you're like, yeah, right, really? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if that were to happen to me, I'd say, listen, God's going to have to come down here and tell me himself. And that's what happened. You know, I truly think that that was Joseph's thought. He was trying to be a good man, but at the same time, I mean, come on, guys, he's still a man. You got to think, he was like, something happened here. I'm not stupid. Something happened here. We go to the next verse. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. You know, Mary gets a lot of credit in different denominations in Christianity. She should, by the way. Very strong woman. Anybody that can birth a son of 
God and then not only that but take care of him and teach him along the way I want to give Joseph a little credit right here that's tough us men are very prideful you've already got your fiance coming to you and telling you that you know I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit and you're like yeah right and then God sends his angel down to speak to you and talk to you about it and you wake up and then all of a sudden not only is she telling the truth but now all of a sudden the son of God is going to be your kid that's a big burden for a man to know that your child is going to trump anything that you've ever done number one which that's always our goal right we always want our kids to do better than us but to know that not only that but this man with this child when he grows up into a man is going to rule I don't know about y'all I'd treat that kid with kid gloves like you know I want to go out and play no It'd be like COVID time, right? Like I'd slap a mask on him and a rubber suit and be like, all right, you can go outside now. You know, you don't want anything to happen to that kid, right? I mean, can you imagine if that kid fell down and broke his leg? God would like smite Joseph. Like, what are you doing? You're not watching him. But honestly, guys, I mean, he took on a heavy burden. I have a lot of respect for a man that can handle that type of burden, swallow his pride, and then handle that type of burden. So I want to talk about, again, the people that did miss Christ on the first Christmas, and Joseph was actually the first one, and that was even before Christmas, because, again, he didn't truly believe Mary at first. It took an angel to come and tell him. So right there, he had missed right off the bat that that was Christ that was actually pregnant, or excuse me, that was in his wife's womb. The next person, if you look at Luke chapter 2, you don't have to turn there, but if you go to Luke chapter 2, Mary and Joseph are going to Bethlehem, And they get to an inn. And they need inn. And I need y'all to envision this, because this is how it says it biblically, that it was time for birth. In other words, there's a lot of nasty stuff going on, right? And, and, And she's standing there at this inn, and Joseph's trying to talk to the innkeeper and get a room, but there's no room. Number one, if I'm the innkeeper and I see a woman that's sitting there pregnant, I'm gonna find something, right? Now, they end up doing that, but let me ask you a question. If you're that innkeeper, and you know then what we know now, you letting them in the door, right? That was number two that missed Christ, because I promise you, if the innkeeper knew that that was Christ, he'd have let them in, right? The third person is King Herod. In Matthew chapter 2, the wise men had come to King Herod, and was telling him that there was a king of the Jews. Herod's exact words were, I'm the king of the Jews. You've got this all wrong. No, he's here. Herod actually remembered, he was smart enough to remember that there was a prophecy of the Messiah. So he calls in a lot of the religious leaders and priests, a lot of those really smart people, your your, uh, your religious folk, those type, those type people, he calls them in to get an idea of, well, where is Jesus? We're going to come back to them. But what happens is, is Herod sends the wise men along the way. And I know most of y'all know this story, and I promise you I'm getting somewhere. Y'all just hold well, Just bear with me. Herod sends the wise men and says, hey, report back to me when you find Jesus. Well, of course, whenever they go see the baby, they realize we don't need to let Herod know anything. And then God actually tells them to leave without going back to Herod. So Herod missed him. That's number three. I want to go back to these religious folk we're talking about here. Herod asked the religious folk, hey guys, y'all know this book. Y'all know the Old Testament. You know these stories better than anybody. Where's Jesus? And they quoted the book of Micah, and they talked about the prophecy of that he was going to be in Bethlehem. The problem that I have with this story, guys, Right after that, Herod goes to look for the child named Jesus. Why didn't those religious folk go find Jesus? If I'm a biblical scholar, if I have so much knowledge of the book and the prophecies lining up, why am I not going to see Jesus? 
these same people, the same people, if you go to Luke chapter 4, they miss Jesus again. Jesus is teaching in the temple. I can't remember the exact words, y'all forgive me, but basically they couldn't believe how great he was teaching. The words just flowed because it's the Spirit, right? And these religious folk, again, we all know these religious folk. You can call them Bible thumpers, whatever you want to call them. They were there. The scribes, the leaders, the priests, all the ones that knew the Old Testament so much better than everybody else. And they looked at Jesus and they said, oh, yeah, that's Joseph's son. They missed him again. Some of the same people. I guarantee you it's some of the same people. Here's what I need you to get from this message. Ask yourself, on the first Christmas, who missed Christ and who didn't? The religious folk, the ones quoting scripture all the time, the ones that know that book front and back? Those guys missed him. King Herod with an evil heart, he missed him. But I want you to think about the ones that met him. You've got shepherds, you've got wise men. What's the difference between them and the others the Holy Spirit the angel came to speak to them they were spirit led and they found Christ I need y'all to understand something and see where I'm going y'all know I know this book's very important this is your sword this is your weapon you gotta know it but I'm gonna tell you right now if you don't meet Jesus you're gonna miss your own rebirth This is serious stuff. you got to know this book, guys. But there's things, there's one thing that's so much more important, and that's your relationship with Jesus Christ. Build that. And here's another thing, and I was talking to somebody yesterday about this. If you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ, you're not going to do very well learning this because the Spirit will show you and lead you what it is that he wants you to learn in this book. If you're trying to do it yourself, good luck. Let me know how that goes. You'll have knowledge. You'll have knowledge. You won't have much wisdom, but you'll have knowledge. Big difference there. Guys, we've got to keep Christ in Christmas. That's what's most important about this whole holiday season. We've got to lead by example and let other people see that. You're going to have a lot of family coming over in the next few days. Be a lot of people through your house, or you're going to be at their house and so forth. Make sure that you're spending the time not only with your family and loving on them, but praying. If you sit down at a dinner table and it's time to pray, speak up. You do it. Be that Christian warrior. Yeah. I just thought of Christmas vacation and that prayer. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag. I love that, I love that movie. And I'm going to tell you something else. Make sure you got Christ in Christmas because if you're anything like me with a wild family, you're going to need it, right? I get the worship team and the prayer team to come up. I want to leave you all with a couple things. One of the things I do want to talk about, and I actually missed it in my sermon. I have a lot of people that ask me, Michael, why do you take the Bible so serious? When you can not only predict the birth of the Messiah, but also who's going to be involved and where it's going to be 700 years before it happens, I'm going to take that pretty serious. Amen? I want to share with you guys a vision that was given to me, and I actually visited with Don about it a couple weeks ago. And then one of the pastors that I, I really like, I love Robert Morris at Gateway in Dallas. Uh, Robert Morris and uh, Jimmy Evans. 
Love those two pastors. Well, I was listening to a sermon that Robert was preaching. I was trying to get some inspiration for this one because I'm still a very young pastor and I need some guidance every once in a while, right? So why not look to some of the best to get some of that guidance? So I'm listening to Robert Morris and he ends his sermon with a vision that God gave him, which is identical to a vision that God gave me. The main thing about Christmas is Christ, right? But the thing is, is what did God actually do? deliver on that day it wasn't just a baby I can this is the vision he gave me if you can imagine in heaven God sitting on his throne I don't know I can't really say I think God walks around a lot more I think people always add him on his throne like he's probably got a lot of energy so I'm going to envision he's jogging around or whatever and, and then he stops he sees his son and he stops and he sees Jesus and he says son The bride that I have prepared for you, which is us, the church, right? I've got bad news. They've sinned, and they're going to die. And Jesus drops to his knees. He says, no, don't let them die. I'll take their place. (laughs) And God sends us that day he doesn't just deliver a baby he delivers his love for us so i'll grab a pen and paper and write this down go ahead nick not only was a baby born on christmas salvation was born as well god delivered his love that day And that's what we've got to keep in mind. And we've got to set that example for the rest of the community and anybody that's coming through your homes in the next few days, your businesses in the next few days. Make sure you're reflecting that light that we talked about last week throughout this community. They need to see it. And another thing they need to see is they don't need to see you just do this at Christmas. This is a year-round project, guys. We need to be focused on that each and every day. Amen?